Hey everyone, today I'll be replacing the clutch master cylinder on this 2005 Ford Focus. Uh, a couple days ago my girlfriend mentioned that there was some oil-like substance inside the cabin. Uh, upon inspection, I found it leaking from the clutch master cylinder. There is a seal broken, so when you press in the clutch, um, you'll see brake fluid coming out uh, right up here. The first thing I'll be doing today is taking out the front driver's seat. It'll just make access to this much easier. All right, so to take this driver's seat out, um, we have four bolts total holding it down. So this protective sleeve comes out and there is the first one second one over here and two in the back. It is a T, T50. Yep, fits perfectly. All right, so there is an electrical connection, just one of them right behind this plate, which is kind of in the way, but I was able to get it out. There is a tab on the bottom of it that you push in and it comes out pretty easily even with this in the way. Alright so with the seat out as you can see we have just a ton of room to work in. You can easily get in there and lay flat and look up at this clutch master cylinder. So next thing I'll be doing is taking off this panel. There are at least four eight millimeter um, bolts that you need to remove and I'll get back to you. Alright so it was four bolts to get the panel off. Um, next thing is the hood release latch that you'll need to take off. It's a 19 millimeter wrench is what you're gonna need. And then the diagnostic cable just pull it out there's a latch as well and then the panel comes right out all right so the panels off pretty easy um, just get your uh, code reader cables out of the way and as well as your hood latch just put it somewhere where it's not gonna bother you next thing we're gonna do is disconnect this speed safety switch again you just press in this metallic clip and it comes out pretty easy. All right, so for these three cables, um, there's a couple different ways you could do it. Um, the way I did it was just for the black and the green, there's again this metallic clip that you push in and comes right out. Green is the same way, push in and it comes out. The red one is reverse, so you actually pull this metallic clip out, which releases it. Um, once you got it disconnected, put it back in for safekeeping. And then these are kind of out of the way. Just push them somewhere up. And um, in order to get these out, you turn them left and they pop out for the red one, the green one as well, left. And just to change things up, the black one, you turn right. And it comes out. Um, just one more quick thing on these. Um, be very careful not to put these in a spot where these could potentially break off. They are just plastic and once those are broken, they're pretty much useless. So those two silver bolts are 10 millimeter. Uh, it's just easiest to get two with a ratcheting wrench. And yep, that's pretty much it. So with those two silver bolts out, there's only one bolt left underneath the hood holding this whole assembly in and the hose is connecting to it. All right, so battery already disconnected. We're just gonna lift this whole battery out. Um, this is a 13 millimeter socket for this bolt. 
All right, so battery's out. Now the tray needs to come out. Um, there was one bolt here. Again, 13 millimeter socket for these. And there's two nuts down there, also 13 millimeter socket for them. All right, next thing we'll be doing is moving this fuse box out of the way a little bit. So there are two clips that you just kind of get underneath the screwdriver. Be careful not to break them off. And once they're over the lip, this thing comes up. And then there is what looks like an eight millimeter bolt or an eight millimeter socket needed for this bolt. And then this whole uh, fuse box moves out a little bit into the spot where the battery would have been. So that bolt I mentioned earlier is actually a 7mm socket to get it off. Um, after removing it, the whole fuse bo box lifts out and you can move it into where the battery was previously. Um, with that, you'll get decent access to the two green kind of knobs down there, which is the clutch master cylinder. Um, now I'll be draining the brake fluid reservoir so I don't have a mess when I take out the clutch master cylinder. So this is um, draining the reservoir, just a pump from a shampoo bottle and a container. Works pretty well. Alright, so there is one bolt holding in this assembly besides the lines. So what I did is put in my 8mm socket on top of that bolt by hand and I'm going to try to connect this ratchet with a long extension to it to loosen it. So I didn't need my swivel, just the ratchet and the long extension and I'll just loosen that bolt now. So before I take off those lines I just hit it with the air compressor Try to get that dirt out of there as much as I can to avoid uh, getting dirt in those lines. Alright, so in order to get these two uh, hoses off, there are metal retaining rings on this assembly. And you're just going to get underneath it with a pick. Bought these at Harbor Freight for like a dollar. so. Um, really inexpensive and I've used them so many times. The other thing you can do is put your magnet right up next to it so you don't lose the clips just in case you lose one of these later on. Alright, so the retaining rings are out. Now you should be able to just pull out those hoses. The bottom one is a hard line so I might have to remove the bracket in order to get it off. but. I'll let you know. So the top one came off easy. The bottom one, as I said, is a hard line and didn't move. So I will remove that bracket. You can see that bolt right there. Probably eight millimeters again to get it off. Um, also put rags underneath this. Brake fluid's pretty nasty stuff. So try to contain it as best you can. All right, with the uh, bracket off, the hard line came out easily. So I think that should be it as far as stuff holding this in. So back in the cabin, you can tell this thing's nice and loose, but the clutch assembly and the pedal assembly is just preventing it from being removed. So I was hoping I didn't have to, but I will loosen the four bolts holding in this pedal assembly. Uh, I don't think I'll take it off, I'll just loosen it enough to be able to pull that out. Alright, so the pedal assembly is loose, and this thing also has more play in it, which with two hands I'll be able to get it out. Alright, so here it is, taken out. Uh, take the foam off, put it on the new one and we'll get back to installing it. So those four bolts for the pedal assembly were 13 millimeter deep walled socket is what you're gonna need. 
All right, my battery died, so I did uh, skip a few steps here, but it's nothing you didn't see when we took the part out. So, with the pedal assembly still loose, I put the new master cylinder in, um, put it in place, um, put this lever on the stud. Don't forget to do that, and then I tightened up the four clutch or pedal assembly bolts and put in the two silver bolts for the master cylinder. So that kind of snugged everything up and then the most difficult part was getting this bolt in from underneath the hood just because uh, things didn't line up quite as nicely. All right, so the bottom hard line is connected again. The bracket holding this hard line in place is also connected. Um, one thing I wanted to tell you when putting these lines back in is to position your retaining ring beforehand in the open position. Push the line into place and then push the retaining ring back in. All right, so I'm ready to bleed this thing. Um, big question many people have is where is the bleeding valve for the clutch master cylinder? So the easiest way to see it is if you look under the car, there's your oil filter, shitty Fram oil filter, don't buy those. And if you go up from it, it is right up here in a shitty spot to get a hose on. So it is capped with little black cap that you just take pliers, pull it off, and the nut beneath it to open the valve is an 11 millimeter nut. So I'll show you my setup now. So the Mighty Vac did not work. I could not get a good seal on it to get a vacuum seal. So what I ended up doing was um, getting a friend to help me push the clutch in, fill up the reservoir, and after a while the clutch did get stiff again. So um, Ford should be ashamed of themselves for putting this bleeder right here. Um, as you can see there's just electrical wires everywhere. Um, there's no good way to get a hose on there. Um, without, you know, really going out of your way. Uh, it's also extremely difficult to open this bleeder valve because it's kind of buried underneath this cast iron housing, so uh, just a really poor job on where they put that thing, so. Regardless, I will get back into the cabin now, show you how to put those connectors back in. All right, so underneath the hood, just put the fuse box back where it was, battery tray and battery back in, and that's all we did there. Inside the car, we've got these uh, four switches to put back in, and then just hook them back up to the wiring. Um, that's all pretty self-explanatory stuff. All right, so pretty easy. You just twist them back on, connect the wiring back to them. Um, they're in this orientation in case you forgot. Um, the speed control switch or whatever it is, same thing, you just pop it back into place. And then all we have to do is put the panel back on with your hood release latch as well as your um, diagnostic uh, wiring harness and gotta bolt that back in put the seat in and that's about it so thank you guys for watching um, I know there was some spots where I couldn't film because my phone was dead I apologize but if you have any questions let me know